I'm seated here with Tepi Soposa and she's just penned her first book, Fueling Futures. How are you feeling about this? I'm feeling extra excited. I can't wait for people to get this book. And at the beginning you talk about the importance of family um, and the climate that one is born, like born into, right? Sure. And I just want to understand why did you feel the need to introduce Tepi Soposa the way that you did in the book? I felt like it was necessary for me to introduce myself because people have got this perspective of me that I'm a typical political baby and that I, I'm not a human being. I don't know what it feels like to grow up in a normal family. But we actually spend quality time as um, the Posa family and um, we are very close with my parents on a personal level like you can't believe. I can't even describe the different relationships that I have with my parents. But even in the book I refer to them as the yin yang of my life. Mm. And there's a specific quote from Tamasi himself where he says, You were determined to define your own influence and seek independence from your family name. Is this true? And why was this important when you could have easily used the Posa surname to navigate through spaces that might have been difficult for you? So I believe that it's important because at the end of the day, I've got my own journey to walk. Um, and people say to me, you've got big shoes to fill. And I said, what shoes? The, I mean, these are leaders that have raised me. I was blessed with them. Mm -hmm. I need to use their skills to be able to uplift our youth and also to be a to be the difference I want to see, I need to be my own individual. I need to express myself differently. As I express in the book, I'm very different um, in, a, uh, in comparison to my siblings. And that's not a bad thing. I'm a middle child, but at the same time, I've got my own challenges and I'm very artistic and I want to bring it out differently. And you're speaking of being unique. So there's one element in the book that maybe people wouldn't have known about you and that is that you used to be a singer. You refer to yourself as the Mariah Carey of Mpumalanga. So <laughs> could you maybe hit a note for us or two? <laughs> there can be miracles. So yeah, that's my new voice okay. based on a and voice and experience that, I mean, this is my new voice mm -hmm. uh, through the book I wrote because I lost my voice. But now that uh, I found my voice through the book and through my experiences, um, I'm really grateful for those bad experiences. But at the same time, miracles typically so is that miracles is part of my journey. And I didn't know when I was six years old when I loved the song what it actually meant, but it was in line with everything that I'm actually uh, all about right now. It was a miracle that I survived. Um, brutal um, strangulation. It was a miracle that I'm still alive till today and that I could overcome things and that I didn't take a shortcut and believe in actually um, dwelling in my pains and actually going out there and committing suicide. Um, I'm not judgmental to people who are in experiencing depression because I've experienced depression numerous times but I want to help the person who's going through that right now because I know what it feels like and people that have been through that and can't share it with somebody when they read the book they can tell that I've been through it but I've overcome it so it, it's something that we're trying to change and transform pains into power but how do we do it if we don't have a living example please take us through this process of why you've used fuel as a symbolic you know my first business was prime was um, actually petrol and um, I had my first filling station in, in 2014 in Pumalanga and I was running it at the age of 24. But that was after a year and a half of training in Brent oil um, in Irene. And then after I went to Cape Town for training, basically um, in head office, how does a filling station work? All the logistics so that I must understand the business so that I know how to market it mm -hmm. and bring and draw different feet to the filling station. So I decided, you know, I'll use it as a metaphor to say I fueled children I feel, I'm, and I still am. I've I'm feeling um, youth, I'm feeling adults, I'm feeling myself constantly. Mm. Sitting here as well, I'm, I'm fueled once again because it's, in, it's inspiring for me to have people actually want to hear my story mm. because I think a lot of people out there are always suppressing stories, abuse stories, business stories. Everybody's suppressing what you want to say, mm. restricting you to what you want to say. I want people to start having real conversations with themselves. I'm sure you notice in the book I also say people lie to themselves more than they lie mm. to others. That's because at the end of the day we're trying to talk to that matter. So I want you to talk to yourself first and then use the skills and um, the steps that we've shared at the end of the book to continue with your life and fueling it differently and I mean it's it's a handbook you can put it in your bag mm -hmm. and I mean it's like it's so much fun I, I also go back and do it I'm busy with the audiobook right now and 
I mean, I still have fun. I can't believe some of the things I came up with as well. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh yes, this is so exciting. I can't wait. I feel like I'm there all over again. It's amazing. Mm -hmm.